A year before the October 7th attacks, the General Assembly asked the International Court of Justice to render an advisory opinion on the legality of Israel's occupation, its discriminatory practices in the occupied Palestinian territories. 52 states have asked to appear before the court in six days of public hearings, of which we've heard 11 states over two days. Israel will not be appearing. The Israel-Palestine conflict is not a cartoon narrative of villain and victim. Israel took occupation of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank was legitimate. And a number of states called upon the ICJ to rule that this is a case of apartheid. This one also serves as a conduit and a vehicle for a political solution. The International Court of Justice is hearing a case against Israel's occupation of Palestine. Now, this comes just a month after another case accusing Israel of genocidal acts in Gaza. If you're wondering how these two cases are different and what's groundbreaking about this one, we've got you covered. A year before the October 7th attacks, the General Assembly asked the International Court of Justice to render an advisory opinion on the legality of Israel's occupation, its settlements, the annexation, the demographic changes it had brought about, and its discriminatory practices in the occupied Palestinian territories and to lay out what the legal consequences of findings of illegality would be. Now, this is a very different case from that brought by South Africa against Israel under the Genocide Convention. Instead, the ICJ here is being asked to give its legal opinion, which would be non-binding, but would carry great legal weight and moral authority. 52 states have asked to appear before the court in six days of public hearings, of which we've heard 11 states over two days. Israel will not be appearing. It issued a, a statement denouncing and saying, while the request to the court makes it seem as such, the Israel-Palestine conflict is not a cartoon narrative of villain and victim. But most states were seen to disagree. South Africa and Bangladesh spoke on account of their own fight for self-determination, saying on that basis, they'd had to fight for the oppressed. Now, the legal arguments as laid out by a number of states, but perhaps most deftly, in my opinion, by the state of Belize, go as such. The prolonged occupation is unlawful, as an occupation under international law is meant to be temporary. A protracted long-term one necessarily violates the right to self-determination of the people under occupation. And also, it is not necessary or proportionate to the original use of force. So Belize said, even if we assume the original use of force in 1967 against Jordan and Egypt, whereby Israel took occupation of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank was legitimate, even if we assume that that was legitimate. Now you have a peace treaty with Egypt, which you signed in 1979, and you have a peace treaty with Jordan, which you signed in 1994. So now in no way can that original use of force and the ongoing occupation be a necessary or proportionate one. They also pointed to the apartheid of the state, the fact that areas and roads are closed off to Palestinians in what the Israeli army calls a policy of sterilization. These lands have further been annexed in violation of the law of occupation by the settlements that Israel has built there and a number of states called upon the ICJ to rule that this is a case of apartheid. Palestine also represented itself, with its representative breaking down in what was an emotional moment before the court while talking about his people's plight. Philippe Sands, a renowned international lawyer, appeared for Palestine and stated that the right of self-determination required that all member states bring the occupation to an end, saying no aid, no assistance, no complicity, no money, no arms, no trade, no nothing. Most states echoed these demands, calling for the ICJ to order that Israel end its occupation, withdraw from the occupied territories, dismantle its legal regime, lift the blockade of the Gaza Strip, withdraw its settlers and pay reparations to the Palestinian people. A lot of states also referred to the Namibia opinion given by the court in 1970, which played a crucial role in delegitimizing South Africa's occupation and apartheid in Namibia leading to sanctions and a political solution. It is hoped that similar to that case, this one also serves as a conduit and a vehicle for a political solution. And that's a wrap for now. Stay tuned for further developments on this critical case. You can watch the hearings live and receive updates and expert analysis on Dawn News English. This is Sophie Ali, signing off.